Jesus name. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hope City Church. My name is Amy Sims, and I'm one of the pastors here, and I am just so excited to see, to lead, and to just glorify our King. He's been so sweet to already meet with us, 
And so we are just expectant for all that God is going to do today. Father, thank you that you, you are all we need, God. God, I thank you for the gift of, of friends and family and the way that you put us in community. And Lord, I thank you for this church and the way that, all the ways that you're working and that, Lord, we just we give you the glory. Come and have your way. In Jesus' name.
place I stand, holy ground, holy
we prepare our hearts for communion, can, I just want to take a moment just for us just to just settle into this. Just maybe put your, your body in a posture of, of humility. Put your heart in a, in a posture of gratitude. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purposes that prevail. I love that word so much because even this morning in our, our early prayer with our team, one of our pastors just had this prompting from the Holy Spirit that, that our, our, our role is not to impart God's story to you, but you, you're already coming in with God's story. Like God's already been working in your story. And yet here's, here's, the, here's the part that we want to get our hearts around. I, I know so many of you, you would have not chosen your own story. You wouldn't have chosen your pain. You wouldn't have chosen your loss. And yet in just this moment, God's saying, in your constraints, that's, what, that's the place I want to accomplish your purpose. In your place of, of loss, that's where I want to do my best work in you. And so the good news is, is we don't have to, I don't have to open your eyes to see a new story, but we just have to put ourselves in the position to have our eyes open to see God's story already at work in your life. This is why I love communion so much, because we're just stepping into God's already existing supernatural redemptive story on our behalf and so we celebrate God's body broken for us we celebrate his his blood shed for us and and this isn't some religious act that he does to check off a box he does that so that our stories matter so that our lives take on a redemptive value as they find their wholeness in his body broken his blood shed for us so, Lord, we, we say thank you. We, we feel the weight of your redemption over us. That you enter right into our story. You, you take the worst moments and you, you redeem them. You take the most scarred places of our past and your brokenness covers over them to make us whole. So we take this, not just in remembrance, but we take this receiving the, the gift, the glory of your spirit in our life. And Father, your blood shed for us.
having your blood applied to it and now calling us righteous sons, daughters. So we drink this knowing that we're free, knowing there is no sin that condemns us, there is no past that defines us, but our present reality is your redemption and your love over our lives.
till the walls come falling down. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. We worship you, God. hand would sweep through this place. For the things that this world has dropped down on us, God, I pray that your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi. Welcome to Hope City Church. My name is Gerald, and we're so glad you've taken the time to worship with us today. You'll notice a connection card in the back of the seat in front of you. On it, you'll notice there are a few ways that you can connect with us. If you're a guest with us today, please fill out as much information as you're comfortable giving us so we can connect with you. For those of you watching online, welcome. We've also included an online connection card for you. It's located in the description of this video. In fact, for every first-time connection card turned in today, Hope City Church will make a $5 donation to a local charity. This much charity is King's Home. King's Home serves youth, women, and kids seeking refuge, hope, and help from domestic violence, neglect, and homelessness. We're hugely grateful for your generous giving towards the mission of Hope City Church. There are several ways to give today. You can write a check and drop it in the offering bucket on the way out of the building today, or you can text to give right now by pulling out your phone and texting the word GIVE to 84321 and following the prompts. You can also download the Church Center app on your phone and set up weekly or monthly giving. Lastly, you can go to the church website, hopecitytuscaloosa.com, and go to the Giving tab. Once again, we are so grateful for your partnership in loving our city in significant ways. We believe everyone has a next step in their walk with God. Today, right after our gathering, we'll be hosting step two in our discovery classes, Discover Your Purpose. This is a great way to help you discover your gifts and passions. We will celebrate how God uniquely made you and provide opportunities for you to be part of what God is doing here. This class is a combination of teaching, conversation, and discovery. If you're new to Hope City Church, this class is a great place to start. This class meets in the Fellowship Hall located in our Education Building next door. A free lunch and childcare are included. We're so excited about our all men's gathering this coming Saturday, February 19th. We'll have great food, fire, fishing, shooting, and a few ways for you to get stirred up as godly men. This event will be held at Zidon Avisha from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's no cost for this event, but we do need to know who's coming. So if you're planning on attending, please write the word man on your connection card and drop it in the bucket on your way out. Or simply sign up on the church app right now. We know getting connected to a church can be hard, 
like really hard. It takes courage to just show up on Sunday mornings. But we believe that if you really want to experience the fullness of who the church really is, it begins in smaller settings. Thankfully, small groups are back. Bible studies, hiking groups, eating groups, discipleship groups. These are designed to help you go deeper with God and with each other. Check out our small group wall on your way out of the building today and join a few others as you wade into deeper waters together. Good morning, everyone. All right. Hey, my name is Ben. I'm one of the elders here at Hope City Church. And uh, whether you're in this room or maybe you're watching online, we want to give you a big welcome, especially if you're a guest this morning. Uh, we know it takes so much courage, so much bravery to come to a new place for the first time, so we just thank you. Um, also, if you're a guest today or if you feel like updating your information, please pull out the connection card in front of you. Um, fill that out with as much information you feel comfortable giving, um, and just drop that off in the buckets on the way out of the door today. Lastly, uh, one of the things we love doing every week is we love like linking arms with other churches and praying for them um, throughout the week. Uh, we do this for a lot of reasons, but mainly to remind us that we're in this together. So this morning, we're going to be praying for uh, Ridgecrest Baptist and Pastor Mills. Please pray with me. Lord, uh, we're just so thankful for um, just the ministry that uh, Ridgecrest has been able to do in this city, um, I guess in Midtown, um, ministering to the people in, their, in that neighborhood, in the area of town, Lord. Uh, so we just ask that you give them energy this morning as they welcome guests and um, welcome uh, first time and second time attenders again. Um, just love on them, um, giving them the power to reach out to the children and everybody that's coming in there and giving them the ability to love on them because you love them first. Um, we just thank you for uh, being here as well. Fill this room with your Holy Spirit um, in a big, big way. We thank you so much, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ben. How are we? Hey, you looking good? Hey, uh, my name is John, and I'm one of the pastors around here. If you are a guest with us, as Ben and Gerald mentioned, uh, listen, props to you. We know it takes a lot of courage to show up to new place, new time, new songs, and uh, really our, our hope. And, and I, I'm so... Uh, nervous every week that that if you come every week there's some things that just may feel like oh yeah they say that all the time and and it just becomes this this rote non-feeling non um that we don't really believe it but i like i want you to know like at the deepest place of, of who we are we our hope is you walk out of here marked with jesus and the trajectory of your life changes and that we would live lives spent on on the glory of God and so we're we're excited that you're here because we we are all part of God's story today uh if um if we can take a minute and just to center our hearts uh there's so much I don't know if, if you're like me in the middle of worship there's so much just stirring and uh so it's just good just to center our hearts as we put our attention back on the scriptures and so uh why don't, why don't we pray together father we we are asking that you would now take the the best energy of, of our of our hearts, the 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 best affections that we have in this moment, and then Lord, would you help us just to put that now on the revelation of Jesus, on your word. And I pray that that something would get stirred up inside of us. Would you give us ears to hear that, that knowing there are some things you want to say to us, some things that you want to accomplish in our hearts, some areas of brokenness that you want to heal. And so would you give us ears to hear and eyes to see that you, you, you're here, you are present to do the work of the Father in the lives of your children. And then while you're sitting there and you're about to receive from the word, I hope, would you just pray for me as I'm about to open the Bible? I want to do that in a way that is not cliched and not out of my own strength. And I don't want to be clever. I want to be humble and I want to get out of the way if I can. And so would you just pray all of that for me in your own heart?
So Lord, now make us aware of your presence. Give us eyes to see what you're doing in this moment, in our own lives, and in this house. And we just say thank you that you're at work, Jesus. Amen. So a few years ago, uh, Pastor Valentino took me to an Indian buffet. Any Indian food fans in the house? Okay, yeah. Um, t- apparently, I had lived a sheltered life. I'd never really experienced the Eastern spice called curry. Um, and, and I don't want to go into the apocalyptic details of my Indian buffet recovery. But needless to say, things did not go well in this region. And, um, and it turns out, what the, one of the things I didn't know, and, and may, you, I'm sure you probably know, and this may be a little bit of an overstatement, but not really. Um, it, it turns out pretty much every Indian dish is a curry dish of some variation. Anybody? Right? And so, like, we, I walked out of the Indian buffet, and I was tasting curry, and then, like, three days later, I'm tasting curry. Like, everywhere. And it doesn't matter what I ate. It's like, it's, it's curry dish now. And, and then everything I smelled was curry. Everything, it was coming out of my pores. Amy's like, move over in the bed. Like, there is something happening in that area. Go take another shower. Like, there was stuff happening. Now, where am I going with that? Um, we're, we're back in Ephesians, and uh, we've been here for about four weeks. If you're new to Hope City, we're in this journey through the, the book of Ephesians. And, and one of the things I'm praying for our house is that, that he would be realigning our spiritual palate where everything that we're tasting is grace. And, and not just like when, when we come here, and it's like, oh yeah, this is grace, but like when you're on your back porch drinking coffee or wine and reading your Bible, uh, it would just be grace. And, and when you're at work and, and you're, you're you know, doing your thing, like it, it's just very clearly the grace of God at work. And when you're coaching Little League, it's grace. Like everything would just have a scent of the favor and the, the beauty and the presence of God, like where, wherever you are. And then the other thing that, that I'm praying for as we journey into Ephesians, and this may feel counterintuitive, but it won't be when, when we get to about chapter 5 and chapter 6. But what I'm praying as we do this together is that God w- would actually stir up a kind of courage in us and a kind of boldness in us, not because we want to do grand things or, or because we're trying to make a name for ourselves. I mean, Jesus has already done that, but mostly that, that the, the person of the Holy Spirit would give us power that you and I might collectively, as a people, as a tribe, just push all the chips of our life to the center of the table and go, I'm all in. I'm all in. So we're back in Ephesians 1, and, and what we're going to orbit around this morning is really this idea of how to pray. Now, not so much what to pray, but though that matters too, but that's not what we're looking at. Uh, it's mostly motivations. Like, why do we pray the way that we pray? And, and the reason that matters is if, if you and I are praying out of fear, if we're praying out of some weird angst or anxiety, if we're praying out of uh, some religious box checking, then, then the prayers really have no power. It, it, again, it's just some kind of religious activity. It's a prayer that you learned as a child. And so what I think Paul's going to do for us today is he is going to show us or have the eyes of our hearts opened that we might see clearly what's before us. And what is going to be clearly before us is this river of grace, like this ocean, this deep reservoir of the grace of God, God's unmerited favor on our behalf. And, and what, what he's going to do for us is if, if you and I can, can drink out of that river, if we can drink out of that reservoir of grace, it actually empowers the way that we pray. It changes the way that we pray. In, in fact, what, what I, I'm hoping for, at least for my own life and, and maybe for yours, certainly for yours too, but mostly mine, um, <laughs> no, but for all of us, is, is that, that when we drink out of this, it actually changes the way that we pray. We're, we're, we're going to start praying things that if we had prayed that five years ago, we'd be like, that's a really foolish thing to pray. Like, that, that, have you ever been around somebody that prays something so audacious you're a little embarrassed by it? And you're like, that's not me. Uh, and, and, like, and, and, and yet you, you realize, like, Paul drinks that Kool-Aid. Paul has been drinking out of that well of grace. And you know that because Ephesians, a little later on, we'll get there probably in 10 or 12 weeks, Ephesians 3, where he says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. And, so, and what he's saying is, is that our prayers are not even hindered by the limits of our imagination. He's like, go beyond that. And, and that only happens when you and I are drinking deeply of the grace of God, and, and, and all of that happens because of the finished work of Jesus for you, for 
me. So this is where we, we jump in. We're at verse 15, and we're just going to hit three verses this morning. Here's where we are. Verse 15, Paul says this. For this reason, and meaning everything I've just told you up, up to now, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. In other words, he's not talking about their initial faith. He's talking about their faithfulness. He's talking about the long arc of time, the, the, this relationship that's gone years and years, walking with the Lord. He's like, I've heard of that. And because I've heard of that in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And now he's going to tell them what he's praying for. And this is what we're camping out on. He says, I'm praying that the, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Okay, so we're, we're going to ask and answer some questions this morning. The first question is this, is what does it mean when he says that he, that he wants us to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation? Now, in, in, depending on the translation of your Bible, if you've got a Bible, um, you're, you're going to either see a capital S spirit or you're going to see a lower case S. Just because just I saw everybody, a lot of people looking down. Just out of curiosity, how many of you in your Bible translation, it's a capital S Okay, so that would represent Holy Spirit, like the, the member of the Trinity. And then how many of you, show of hands, it's the lowercase s. Okay, so the, the way I would read it, um, and the majority of theologians would read it, is, is the, it would be the lowercase s. And meaning, that would, be, that would be our spirit. And, and so what, what that would mean is, is Paul saying, I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying for you, that you would have a spirit about you. That your spirit would be a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, it, it can be capital A, you know, don't, 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 this is not a hill I'm willing to die on, but for the sake of the next 25 minutes that I've prepared really hard for, we're going to go lowercase s, okay? <laughs> okay, because you're like, it's a capital S. It's like, well, go to Alberta Baptist. I'm, you know, they're down the street, okay? What, I'm just, that's a joke, okay. Um, so, so what, he, what he's saying is, um, I want you to have a, a, a spirit about you, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. So the question you got to ask then is like, what, what does that mean? What does it mean to have a spirit of uh, wisdom and revelation? And I think what Paul is saying to us is he knows that, that our spirit, our hearts get clogged up. Right, it gets clogged up with every pain, loss, disappointment that this world has, the dumpster fire of social media, the constant comparison on our lives, uh, the thousand voices that you invite to give commentary on your life. All of that happens usually before we come to the scriptures. And when we finally do get to the scriptures, there's actually very little that happens. And the reason is, is because we don't have a spirit of revelation. We're, we're out of sync with revelation. Am I making sense? And so uh, I think what Paul knows better than most of us is he looks at me and he's like, okay, when John quit, wakes up in the morning, his heart is cold and, and, and frankly uninterested usually it is a spirit of wisdom and revelation. He, he needs to have his, his heart tender and, and aware and sensitive to God, he needs to, to see very clearly what is before him. Now, what I don't think Paul is praying is I don't think he's praying that we would have a spirit for new revelation. Now, I'm, this, I'm not opposed to that. We always, we want to be seeing Jesus in greater detail and beauty, and that will never end for all eternity. We're, we're going to be mining the depths of who Jesus is for all eternity, but I don't think that's what he's praying here. I think what he's praying is that we'd have a spirit of wisdom and revelation to see clearly what is clearly before us. And what is going to be clearly before us is, is going to be the grace of God. Because let's just be honest, isn't that a problem? Isn't the problem that we're not seeing what's before us? It, like in real life, like, I mean, in your marriage, if you're married, isn't that usually the problem in your marriage that you're not seeing your spouse? That you're not seeing your husband, you're not clearly seeing your wife, you're not clearly seeing uh, your children or the thousand gifts that God's put before. Like we don't see it. And, and then usually when we do see it, we're on our deathbed. And then God opens our eyes and we see clearly, okay, the thousand things that we've had our entire life. And we go, they were there all along and I missed them. I, I didn't enjoy them. I didn't savor what was right 
before you and before me. Oh, that we, we wouldn't be that. that. That our hearts would be tender, that our hearts would be sensitive and raw and, and responsive to him. Right, that we would have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And, and wisdom meaning we would, we would have the wisdom of God to know that the wisdom of this world is foolishness. And the wisdom of God meaning giving our lives away for what matters most would just make sense to us. Like the upside down nature of the kingdom that the world goes, why would you give your life to that? Would, would just be intuitive for us. We would see clearly, we'd have a revelation that the kingdom of God, the here and now, right now, that we're citizens of that. We're not citizens of this. And then revelation being not more information, but seeing clearly what is before us, what is there. This river of grace flowing through us through our lives, through the, the old, I mean, like, seriously, do, do we really need, do we really need an, a new nugget in our journals? I mean, we're like, do we need another soundbite from an idiot like me on the Twitterverse? Like, really? No, like, what we need is a little bit of personal responsibility for the body of Christ, that, that it, like, coming to a place like this, having hundreds of people watch one person practice their spiritual gift is asinine. But that all of us would go, I'm coming in here, I want a spirit of wisdom and revelation for me, meaning I want the very spirit of God, the power of God to open my heart to see clearly what is before me. And what's clearly before me is a river of grace. I've seen it. I know it, I've experienced it, I've seen the faithfulness of God in my pain, in my loss, I've seen the faithfulness of God in the best moments of my life, and that just means when we see that, when our, the eyes of our heart, and we're going to get to that in a minute, when the eyes of our heart see, and when we have a spirit of wisdom and revelation to see, what we're seeing is not newness, not, not new opportunity or new seasons, but to see your regular old life in a new way. Like when you can look at your old marriage, and I would just call that marriage, okay? When you look at your old marriage and God gives you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, you can see that old hard marriage sometimes and be like, oh, there's a river of grace flowing through it. There's something new springing up in there. When, when you can look at your painful, tired job and, and you have eyes to see now with revelation that there is grace, the grace of God, provision flowing through your life, you go, wow, this is a gift. When, when you, as a single, are, are you know, waiting for a spouse perhaps, and you're like, this is a painful season of my life, this painful waiting room. But when you have eyes to see that there's a river of grace flowing through it, you realize it's not painful anymore. It doesn't have to be painful, but it has an opportunity to be a beautiful season of savoring the bridegroom of Christ because it's grace. It's grace flowing through, and you've got eyes to see it. It's the revelation of God. Let me put it this way. When the church retreats into the classroom, and hear me, I'm a learner. I am most comfortable in the classroom. But when the church retreats to the classroom, you and I are going to be really impressed with how much we know, but we will have lost the awe of God. We will have lost the wonder of the grace of God. Now, for clarity, do you need to know? Yes. But... In spite of what G.I. Joe says, knowing is not half the battle, okay? Knowing is just a, a little bit, and then the rest, G.I. Joe, that was, a, that was an old reference. I realize I'm in my late 40s. Some of you are like, who's G.I. Joe? Is that a new staff member? Um, <laughs> look it up later. My point is, is knowing, having more information, you know, one more Bible study, one, one more, you know, like, it, it, like, yes, know it. But this is the warning that Paul, he's like, knowledge puffs up. But with the revelation of God, with the Spirit of God holding us and guarding us, the knowledge of God actually creates a, a kind of supernatural humility. 
And so we need the revelation of God. So let's keep going, and we're getting somewhere. He says in verse 18, and having the eyes of your hearts enlightened. Now, in the NIV, which is where I actually learned this passage years ago, he says, I pray that the eyes of your hearts are opened. So the, the question that I want to ask is, okay, what does that mean? That, that the eyes of our hearts would be open. And what I want to do now is just turn our attention just for a minute to Matthew 13. Um, and you can look up on the screen if you want to. But uh, Jesus is being asked why he teaches out of, in parables. Okay, and listen to how he answers this. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Okay, so what does that mean? What does it mean to see, but to not really see? And I think what what he's getting at is there is a head seeing and there's a heart seeing. There's a way to see in the mind, and then there's a way to see in the heart. Let me put it this way. Judas. Judas, very, one of the 12, if you're new to the Bible, he's the one that betrayed Jesus. Judas, very clearly, walked with Jesus for three years. He saw Jesus with his eyes, and yet very clearly, never saw Jesus. And the reason I know that is he sold him. And then he, he killed himself. Like, that's scary. And, and honestly, one, one of my concerns, not... not uh, being from the South, I mean, I've lived here now a long time, but being here, being in the South now, knowing this is sort of the buckle of the Bible Belt, some of you have spent hundreds of hours in, in the light of stained glass. And, and honestly, you've seen, but you don't see. There's no aroma of heaven on your life. And, and I'm not like, like some of you are like, he just looked at me. Like, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. But I know, I know it's possible to see and not see, and that should terrify. I mean, just, like, just think about Judas for a second. Like, Judas literally walked with the incarnate Son of God. He walked with him, and he loved money. Like, loved it more than anything. That was his treasure, even above Jesus. And I know that because in John 11, John 13, I can't remember, uh, G- uh, Mary anoints Jesus' feet with this really expensive perfume or ointment, and it, it, the commentary was that it's worth a year's wages, and she anoints his feet, and Judas pipes in. He's like, why wasn't that sold and the money given to the poor? And then John gives commentary to it, and he says, Judas said that not because he loved the poor, but because he was a thief. This is Judas who literally walked with Jesus. And his heart was untransformed. His heart, his heart was, was hard. Let me take it a step further. Judas performed miracles. Judas healed the sick. Judas cast out demons. I mean, like, I believe that. He was one of the 12. You couldn't be one of the 12 and not do some of that stuff, right? Like, all, you would have heard about it. It would have been somewhere in the New Testament. Like, I think it would have been somewhere in there where the disciples were like, we don't want Judas on our mission team. He can't do any of the stuff we're doing. We're like, what's wrong with him? But you don't get that. They didn't, they, they didn't see what was going on until the very end. Like when he betrayed Jesus. And, and my point is there is a seeing with our mind, and then there is a seeing with our heart. And there, it, there is this pleading. This isn't, this isn't just Paul writing something down and going, hey, this is a really good idea. Paul's like, he's pleading with us that, that the eyes of our hearts would be opened. That we'd, we'd, we'd feel the weight of the kingdom. We'd feel the weight of the grace of God. And so, yeah, do we, do, we need, do we need our eyes opened? Yes. What do we need our eyes open for? We need our eyes open so, so that we, we might be tender. Because when we see Jesus, you can't help but be tender. You can't help but, but be sensitive and responsive and obedient and, and kind of wrecked by it. Some of this just means we got to change our prayer vocabulary. And, and so some of the prayer vocabulary is, instead of saying, Lord, would you just give me like a, a, a devotional nugget today? I mean, anybody do that? I mean, you know, just like help me with my job today, you know, or 
help me win a fight with my wife. I mean, like, whatever, whatever dumb prayers we're praying. Like, and, and I'm not saying that our prayers don't matter and, and the prayers about our jobs and our health. I mean, like, all of that matters because Jesus, like, loves you and he lives where you live. He's, he's with you. He's part of your story or you're part of his story. Of course, those matter. But maybe the first prayer we should pray is, Father, open the eyes of my heart. Like, I, I want to see and not like see the world, but like I want to see. Like I, this, is, this is Paul in, in 2 Corinthians 4 where he's like, uh, let us fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. And, and so he's like, uh, he's just pleading, have your eyes opened to see the invisible. And you might, especially if you're new to church, you might be like, what? How do, how do you see the invisible? That's a work of the Spirit. Like, you can't today go, I'm making a decision. I'm going to start seeing the invisible. It's a work of the Spirit. It's putting ourselves in a position to, to say, okay, Father, open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I, I want to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. You know what that's gonna what's going to happen? Is not only are you going to begin to see the kingdom and the invisibility and the beauty and the supremacy of the kingdom, all of a sudden, this is what, what maybe why you won't, want, you won't want to pray this, is then you're going to have eyes to see how you've wasted your life. You're going to see the 10,000 ways, mine included, how we've given our best attention and affection to small things. And so make no mistake, this is a dangerous prayer. Open the eyes of my heart. I, I want to see you. I want to have a, a, a spirit of wisdom and revelation to see what is right before us. And so the, the question, this is the last question we're going to ask is, okay, what, what is he asking us to pray to see? He's like, okay, I want you to have a spirit of wisdom or revelation. I want, you to have, uh, I want you to see with heart eyes. What is he asking us to see? Well, then he answers it in verse 18 and 19. He says this. Having the eyes of our hearts enlightened so that you may know. And he's going he's to give us three things because he's a, he's a good pastor. He gives us three things. But they don't rhyme, so he's not a great pastor. <laughs> he says, here's why I want the eyes of your heart to be opened. He says, to know the hope to which you were called. Secondly, to see the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And then three, to see the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us. Okay, here's what I want to say about that. I really believe it is possible for you and I to commit to memory uh, Romans chapter 8. Psalm 40, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, something, some of the most beautiful, powerful, potent passages in the Bible. I think it's possible for you to commit those to memory, and in fact, I would encourage you to do that, but I think it's possible for you not to do that and still go to bed hopeless, alone, like desperate. Now, let me, let me tell you what, why this conversation encourages me. Paul He's praying this or asking that we pray this as Christians. He's not praying this for non-Christians. He's praying this for Christians. You know why I think he's praying that for Christians? It's because he knows that our, our eyes, like, we, we drift. Like, anybody else? Like, anybody else just, like, without even thinking about it, you're like, where, where? Like, I'm a thousand miles from where I was with the Lord. Like, what happened? And when, 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 our, when we get older, like, our, our eyes grow dim, Right, like we have cataracts, and we often go blind. And, and Paul is relating that. He's like, when, 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 as a follower of Jesus, like if you're not careful, your your eyes are no longer seeing what matters most. And so he's like, I, I want the eyes of your heart to see clearly, Christian, because it's it's easy by the end of your life to be coasting and to be blind here and to be blind here. So here's what he, he wants us to, to pray. He's like, I want you to see clearly that you have an eternal hope. Do you know what that means? That, that we'd be embarrassed by the kind of affection that we give to the stuff here. Like if we, if we have to lay long aside 
the things of temporary hope, this world, and eternal hope. And we had to lay, lay side by side the kind of attention, affection, money, all the, our lives are like next to it. Like, I'm, I'm going to be embarrassed by that. And he's like, I want you to have eyes to see. I want your eyes to be opened. You have an eternal hope. So set your life, your attention, your affection, your money, all, all that you are to your eternal hope. Because this, this is just a mist, man. This is a blink in the scope of eternity. And then he says, I, I want you to have eyes to see the glorious riches in the inheritance now, next weekend, I'm going to be talking about heaven, because five times in the book of Ephesians, he talks about in heavenly places, so we're going to spend a, a minute talking about that. But it's helpful to know that our inheritance is not an eternal golf course. Like, whoever came up with that literally lame, like, here's what heaven is, I mean, it's like swimming pools for eternity. I'm going to get to fly do you know what the inheritance is for the, for the follower of Jesus? It's Jesus. Jesus is our inheritance. Like, and I'm going to spoil a little bit for next week, but like, if your only reason for going to heaven is because you don't want to go to hell, then you're going to hate heaven. Because heaven is not for people that don't want to go to hell. Heaven is for people that love Jesus. Because he's our inheritance. He's all that we are. He's, he's all that we long for. Even when, and when our hearts drift and we go, God, what am I doing? Why am I giving myself to small things? He's my inheritance. And so Paul's like, I want you to see that. I want you to see clearly that's, that's who he is. That's who you are. And then he says, and, and the immeasurable power. Do you know what he's saying there? He's like, but until then, until, until you get to heaven, until you receive your inheritance in the Lord, he's like, you've got power in the here and now. You actually don't have to be defeated by your sin. If you have the Holy Spirit, if you're a Christian, if you have the Spirit of God living inside of you, you have power to overcome your sin. And now, imperfectly, and there's going to be long seasons where we're like, I feel defeated. But there are longer seasons where we're like, it's the Spirit of God at work in my life. And he's like, you have a measurable, you have no idea what is before you. Just drink from this unending river of grace before you. Because it's power. Let me put it this way, and then we're going to turn the corner. If I had a checkbook, and this is such a bad illustration, I just couldn't come up with anything else. If I had a checkbook, some of you don't know what that is. It's, a, it's an ancient way people used to pay for things. Um, if I had a checkbook... And I had access to a, an, a bank account with $10 billion. And I said, hey, today, and, I, and it's my money. I can do whatever I want. And I, and I said, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm giving out a million dollars to anybody that comes up here and gets, gets a check from me. There's going to be a line, right? And everybody that gets up here, I, I'm just assuming, I think it's a good assumption, once you get that check, it's actually going to stir up some emotions for you. Anybody? I mean, if you're cold regarding a million dollars, then like, what, let me say a hundred million dollars, like whatever. Like it would stir, and, I, and it, my, my point is, is Paul's like, I want you to feel that way about this. Because he's like that, like a million dollars, like it's nothing. That, that changes in, in the moment of a shifting economy. And it doesn't matter anyway. He's like, this though, if you have eyes to see the riches of the kingdom, what you have access to, and who you are in the king of kings, like, you, you, there, there's going to be a weight and an emotion that naturally springs up. So here, here's, here, here's where I'm going to transition. My, my, one of my, my concerns, and concern may be a too strong of a word, as, as we're in Ephesians, I've heard some really great feedback. Like people going, oh, I love Ephesians. It's my favorite book. Oh, my goodness. I, you know, I'm, I'm doing my quiet time now in Ephesians. Or I'm in this discipleship group where we're doing Ephesians. And, and then I did that Beth Moore thing like three years ago. And then in college, oh, man, Ephesians really changed. Like, and, I, and, like, and I'm, yes to all of that. Yes to all of that. But my concern for if, if you're part of Hope City, like our, one of our, our hopes is that you like love the Bible. Like, but no, like the Bible's a tool, right? The, the Bible, it's, the Bible's not part of the Trinity. 
The Bible is the revelation of Jesus so that we might see Jesus and love Jesus. So I don't want you to love the Bible more than you love Jesus. But like, I do want us to love the Bible and to be like, I love it. I, like, it, it is the river of life. It is the source for, for truth and for my life. It's, the, like, it's everything. It, like, it, it shows me the way to, to walk in wholeness in the kingdom. Like, yes, I want you to love it. But here, here's my concern, and I see this so often, and I know you've seen it. You've probably experienced it. I know I have, is that we can know everything we think we need to know about the book of Ephesians, and you can still walk out of here desperate and alone and fractured and that would be a tragedy. Because to, to see with your head and not see with your heart. And so the only way that we see with our heart is for the Holy Spirit to open our hearts. So what I want to do is in, in the most non-eventful way I just I want us to have a moment where we just open our hearts to him the, the best that you know how like I, there's there's no like and here's how that what that looks like like I don't know what that looks like for you but I I would imagine it means for you and I to be quiet to turn down the noise of our heart to say no to the lies and to pray father open the eyes of my heart I want to I, I want to see you I want to see your kingdom. I want to see the grace of God before me. So why don't we take a moment and do that? And I would encourage you. And, and again, if you're new to church, like we're so glad that you're here, okay? But I, one of the things that we're passionate about, like we, we want you to have an encounter with the Lord. And so if, if you're here and, and you're like, that's me, John. I, want, I, I am desperate to have an encounter with the Lord today. Then maybe get in a posture. I, I find from my own heart, like, getting down on, on my knees, like, it just, it, because I'm such a jerk, and I, I am prideful, and I like to be in charge, and I'm not in charge here when it comes to the kingdom. And so maybe you get in a posture like that. So Holy Spirit, we, we ask you to now make our hearts tender, sensitive, raw. Would, would, would you break open the dam of our tear ducts that we would be broken over our own sin. Would you give us eyes to see? Would you, would you open our eyes now? The eyes of our heart to see you. Make us tender to you.
Father, I'm, I'm just, just in this moment, I'm, I'm embarrassed that anybody knows, but most importantly that you know the th- thousand small things that I've given my best energy to this week. What people think about me and how I produce and and so would you along with my friends here would you would you cause the eyes of our heart to see so clearly the beauty and the majesty and the worth of your kingdom that's before us. When we stand together. So I want to invite our our prayer team to come forward. And one of the things that's, that's really important for us is we provide space for what we just call ministry. We're, um, where you get to receive personal ministry, where somebody gets to pray for you. And um, gets to listen to the Holy Spirit on your behalf. Whenever I, whenever I get personal ministry, the picture that comes to my mind is when, when you're in the middle of a tornado, you know, you can't hear anything but the person that's praying for you is not in the middle of the tornado. They, they have the potential to, to hear very clearly what God's saying to you, but you can't hear it because you're in the middle of it. And so ministry is so important because it, it gives us the opportunity to receive ministry in, in a way that, that confirms that you, you know, you're not the only one listening. There are other people listening on your account. If you're here, you need physical healing. If you're here and you just need encouragement, maybe you feel a thousand miles away from God. When you come. So, Lord, we, we know you're here. We know that you're, you're speaking to us. We know that you love us. You're, you're so tender towards us. And your invitation to us to be tender towards you, it's only because you love us so much that you want us to, to see clearly how good that you are. So we're going to sing the song. Why don't you come as, as we corporately we sing, but why don't you come and receive prayer? Come on. There's a place my eyes 
Father, we're just, we're in awe of your generosity, your kindness, your grace, the freedom that you, you offer to every one of us, and it's a river, it's, it's never, it's never the same. We step into it today and we'll step into it tomorrow and your grace, your freedom, your mercy, it it's new. It's it's beautiful in a different way. And so would you even now as we step back out, we re-engage our interactions with our our meals with our vocation have a more potent scent of your grace that you're at work you're, you're working even we, we don't see that you're working you're weaving your grace into our story so I pray every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms Lord all my friends that we, we know you're so generous to give all that you are give us eyes to see we say thank you Jesus in a moment we're going to ask you to, to exit quietly we're going to just we're going to continue to do some ministry if you want to if you like some prayer our discovery class two is happening in our ed building just next door. So if you're planning on staying or if you're interested in getting more information about how to get connected on a team, this is the class you're going to want to go to. Free lunch, child care, the whole thing. So God bless you. We'll see you next time.